Membrane potentials, graded and action potentials. In order to describe the generation of changes in membrane potential, we will use a motor neuron, which stimulates skeletal muscle to contract. The neuron can be divided into three zones. The input zone, consisting of the cell body and extensions known as dendrites, has chemically gated channels in its membrane to receive stimuli from other neurons as graded potentials. These graded potentials move toward the trigger zone at the axon hillock. The trigger zone is where voltage-gated channels are first encountered in the neuron. If the graded potentials reach threshold in the trigger zone, then an action potential is generated. The action potential is transmitted via voltage-gated channels down the axon to the output zone, where it causes skeletal muscle to contract. In the input zone, graded potentials are generated when stimuli such as neurotransmitters attach to receptors of chemically gated ion channels, causing them to open briefly. Then, shift in the distribution of ions on either side of the membrane results in a slight change in electrical potential. Graded potentials travel a short distance through an input zone toward the trigger zone before fading away. It is the net voltage produced by graded potentials at the trigger zone that determines if the threshold of voltage-gated channels is reached to trigger an action potential. Some graded potentials occur when chemically-gated sodium channels open to allow sodium ions to diffuse into the input zone. This electrically moves the trigger zone closer to or above the threshold. They are considered to be depolarizing graded potentials. If chemically gated potassium channels in the input zone are stimulated to open, it allows potassium ions to diffuse out of the cell and causes the inside of the membrane to become more negative, moving the voltage in the trigger zone away from the threshold. These inhibiting graded potentials are known as hyperpolarizing graded potentials. Since depolarizing graded potentials cannot individually reach threshold, an insufficient quantity does not cause a response at the trigger zone. If, on the other hand, there are enough of them to reach threshold, an action potential is generated. If there are more hyperpolarizing graded potentials than depolarizing, the net membrane potential in the trigger zone becomes even more negative than the resting potential. This would temporarily inhibit the generation of an action potential or require additional positive stimulation to reach threshold. When the net graded potentials arriving at the axon hillock reach threshold, the action potential begins. Both sodium and potassium voltage-gated channels are stimulated to open. Sodium channels open quickly, allowing sodium ions to diffuse in and add positive charges to the inside of the cell membrane. If enough positively charged sodium ions diffuse in to bring the voltage on the inside of the membrane to zero millivolts, it becomes uncharged and we refer to the cell membrane as being depolarized. Sodium channels are only open long enough to allow sufficient amounts of sodium ions to pass through to cause depolarization. At this point, the inactivation gate on the sodium channel closes to block any further inflow of sodium ions. In actuality, before the sodium channels close, enough sodium ions diffuse in to cause the inner surface of the cell membrane to become positively charged. The purpose of the inactivation gate is to prevent the membrane from stimulating itself and causing repeated action potentials. At the same time the sodium channels close, the slower voltage-gated potassium channels open and allow potassium ions to rapidly diffuse out of the cell. The removing of positive charges from the inside of the membrane causes its internal surface to become negatively charged again or repolarized. Once enough potassium has diffused out of the cell to cause the inside of the membrane to be below threshold, the inactivation gate of the sodium channel opens as the gates on both types of ion channels close, but not before the inside of the membrane becomes less than the resting potential of minus 70 millivolts to cause the inside to become hyperpolarized.
Sodium-potassium pumps transport sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell to restore ion concentrations and to, along with leak channels, re-establish its resting membrane potential. The depolarization of one area of the cell membrane causes neighboring voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels to reach their threshold. The result is the action potential spreads like a wave across the entire cell membrane. Once the action potential begins, all of the output zone will depolarize and repolarize. This is known as the all or none principle. In other words, the action potential does not diminish as it travels across the membrane, unlike the graded potential. So either all of the membrane depolarizes and repolarizes, or none of it will. It is also important to note that the amplitude of the action potential is always the same. It is the frequency of the action potentials that signifies a stronger response.